sure all of your content is available in as many channels as possible. Don't think to yourself, oh, I don't want to spam people by putting the same video up on YouTube or Blip.TV or my website. It's not up to you to decide where people will engage in your content, right? And by the way, just tell them, hey, I put this video up in all these four places. Okay, cool. Then they know about it. Use places like SlideShare, S-L-I-D-E-S-H-A-R-E.com, a great site for PowerPoint presentations. You might think, that's so not sexy. <laughs> I want the cool, hip, new thing. <laughs> it's some of the best search engine optimization you'll get, okay? Other tip, I always go back to SEO. My friends at work tease me about it, but it really is critical, right, is have keywords about your business. So keywords means if you sell uh, ties at a department store. Obviously the word tie has to be in there, but that's such a general word. Also say things like men's ties, et cetera, et cetera. I won't give you a whole lesson on SEO, but in every location where you put that video, every, every place you put text, a blog post, et cetera, everything you do, just make sure you tell Google, hey, this content, it all ties back to me. Ties, men's ties. I live in Burlington, Vermont. That's where my store is, Burlington, Vermont. I sell men's ties on, on Fridays, right? So you want people online to find, using those keywords that you would use as a person, those things are gonna help them quickly find you. So again, advice is to always remember that it's not just pushing out content. You gotta have the metadata, et cetera, for SEO that will let people find it. Um, the other thing quickly I wanted to say with all this like tough love stuff is remember how fun it is and engaging when you put out a piece of content and someone you don't know says, hey, that piece of content really resonated with me, right? One thing about that conversation that you have in public, other people will learn about you and your brand by how you talk to the consumers that interact with your content, right? So you don't just think online, I'm dealing with this one person, who by the way may be critical of you as well, right? Remember that that conversation can and probably will live online. So always see those opportunities when anyone talks to you online, that's a huge opportunity, even if they say, hey, I hate your ties, they're too tight. Right? The opposite of love is not hate, especially online. The opposite of love is apathy. If there's someone talking about your stuff, respond and, sit and tell those people. I think it's three things. A, I hear you. I'm listening to you. So even if you don't like my ties, I'm going to respond to you and I'm not going to be a big faceless brand or even someone that looks like they're ignoring you. I'm going to listen. Secondly, I'm going to give you a, a specific response. I'm sorry the ties are too tight. Are you aware of our expando neckties? Let me send you one in the mail. Third, follow up. Right? And it's not just about that person. That whole cycle will demonstrate to the next person, hey, I, I didn't like those, those neckties were too tight as well. They answered that guy, gave him a response, and they followed up. And that will be a, a huge, wonderful message for your brand. I'll bet you that all three of you have in your head some sites that maybe not everybody in the room knows about that would be useful to, to, to at least have people check out. Can could you, could you mention a couple if you have them? So there's one called Quick.com. So everybody smile because you're live on the internet from my phone, video streaming to my website using Quick, Q-I-K, dot com. So when we talk about the ability to create content anywhere at any time, this is actually live. What happened when I pushed the record button was a tweet went out on Twitter saying Howard is now recording something live on Quick. So some of the content from this panel will be there. It will post it to a website that I have after I hit the stop button. Um, all the location-based services, again, especially if you're an in-person business, and for some reason this morning I'm focused on in-person businesses, but if you have an in-person business, Yelp, GoWalla, Foursquare, Loot, L-O-O-P-D, and uh, World, W-H-R-R-L, and My Town. Those are a very long list of location-based services. If you didn't get the list, it's on a post on my website. Like Everything that I'm talking about today, I made notes beforehand, put my notes on the website, so that way, uh, at harbrook.com, you can get it and come grab my business card afterward. I'm happy to, happy to share this information with you. But all those location-based services let people um, 
uh, you know, check into your location, leave tips about your business, tell others about it, advertise that they're um, there. How many of you are familiar with Ning, N-I-N-G? Does that sound familiar? So Ning is sort of this, this kind of strange but rare gem online. It's not really that rare. It's got like, what, 12 million groups or something? It's sort of like Yahoo groups. But here's a little trick. If you go to Google, put the name of any vertical, like so say you're, I don't know, a carpenter, and then say carpenter plus Ning in Google. So if you go to Ning.com, it's actually impossible or difficult to search the groups just by going to the site. But in Google, if you put Ning, and again, the word of a vertical you're trying to look for, for all of our healthcare clients, the very first thing I do, I kid you not, when someone says, hey John, we're working on a, a sickle cell anemia thing or hemophilia, the first thing I do is I go to, to Google and I put in, for instance, hemophilia plus name. And I'll find usually three, sometimes 12, 15, depending on the vertical forums where people are talking about those, those disease states. So if you say you're a carpenter and that's your business and you go to some of these groups, now remember, if you're very obviously geographically focused, this is more about the insights and the analysis you want to do for the audience you're trying to reach. They may not be your actual customers in your geographical area. That said, you can do Ning plus Carpenters plus Minneapolis and you may find a bunch of, of Carpenters talking Minneapolis. Now, the point here is that when you go to those forums, you hear people speaking in real language about the, the issues that your business may face, right? So one thing about social media is it's not a, one of the biggest parts of my job is analytics is understanding, really trying to understand, you know, if we're working with millennials, how do millennials interact online? You can't really put people into a box, but you kind of have to at least make some decisions. You know, women age 33 and up, you know, it used to be people thought, well, Facebook is just for kids. You may have, you probably know this, the biggest demographic on Facebook is women over 30, over 30, right? So if you're thinking, I'm gonna reach teens on Facebook, don't do it, use texting, right? This is the type of core information you can't just scatter shot your efforts online. The same way you wouldn't say, I'm gonna do, like I said before, a direct mail marketing piece to 10,000 people randomly. I'm gonna throw those postcards up in the air. No, you would say, where are the offices, where the people are that I want to, to, to reach? Uh, am I trying to reach college students? Then those postcards, I'm gonna stand outside that college and pass up those postcards. You're smart about it. You have to be smart about who you're reaching online. So Ning is a great example. WordPress, I'm just gonna tell you, I think is the best one. I'll, just, I'll, I'll go there, I'll say that. There's another one called TypePad, T-Y-P-E dot, uh, I'm sorry, TypePad.com. Squarespace. Squarespace is a New York City business. They make really nice websites. Um, also a content management system. They can also sell stuff on e-commerce, that kind of stuff. And how are you know three these? What's the one that pushes automatically when you create an email? Um, There's like two. Posterous and Tumblr. Yeah. Posterous, it's spelled like P-O-S-T-E-R-O-U-S. -E right. Posterous is a great tool. If you were like, how do I make a blog? What's a blog? Right. <laughs> My mom has a Posterous. Posterous is great. You can email, you set up an account with them. You can email anything at this conference today and it automatically will post to your blog. You can take a picture and it posts to your blog. So rather than having to sign in, create a, you know, a text, etc. And then it's a great tool because if you're so busy, which understood, you, you don't have time to create those long text posts, you can do that. 